Shalom. Kohlaima Yahweh. Bahashem Yahweh Shai. Bahashem Kwankadash. All praises be to the Most High, Yahweh, in the name of His Son and our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad, and double honor and respect to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. Coming back at you in another lesson, believe his prophets. So though every word of the Bible is faithful and true and is not to be taken for granted. If it's written in the great book, as we like to call it, then it means something. So there are individuals out there that have been exalted, that have gained a great following over a short period of time. And they're using punchlines like Esau Edom gets filleted by the word or Wi-Fi destroys Shedemite. So what they've done is they've created a forum or platform for entertainment. And this is not what this is about. Our ability to be set in order shows humility, shows maturity and wisdom. We got to watch how we walk, how we move. Did not Yahushai wash the feet of his disciples? Took on the status of a servant. <clears throat> So if the greatest man on earth lowered himself to the level to wash another man's feet, then <laughs> what message does that send to us? So pride lifteth up and destroys us. Let's go here. I'm going to go to... Yeah, let's go to Second Chronicles. <clears throat> One moment. Knowledge puffeth up. Let's go to Second Chronicles twenty. I'm gonna go down. And this is a story. Three verse one. And it came to pass after this also that the children of Moab and the children of Ammon and with them other beside the Ammonites came against Jehoshaphat to battle. Then there came some that told Jehoshaphat, saying, There cometh a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea and on this side Syria, and behold, they be in Hazazan Tamar, which is in Gedi. And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaim a fast throughout all Judah. So when the kings of Judah and Israel and the old world went to inquire of the Lord, they sought out seers, prophets, going against our enemies, oppressors, or opposing militaries. Let's jump down to verse 18. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground, and all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. And the Levites of the children of the Kohathites and of the children of the Korhites 
stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with a loud voice on high. And they rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall ye be established. Believe his prophets, so shall ye prosper. So we're seeing the church, the priesthood being built in these last days. The house of seers. So to ignore instruction is to accept destruct is to accept destruction. To ignore instruction is to accept destruction. What is destruction? To be destructured, unalive, fall apart, ruin. Desolation. See, let's go here. <clears throat> We're going to use other sources this evening. Romans 13. See, government. So right off the bat, the house of David being raised up in the last days. The governors. And this can also apply to the government that we're under right now, which is Edom. But you have a church being built, which is the Lord's temple, his elect. <clears throat> Romans 13, verse 1. Let every soul be subject unto the higher power for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of the Most High. So the prophets are anointed that are sent from on high. Not just regular men, which started with Yahawashai, followed by the disciples, which later became apostles, which means sent forth. Let's read it in other versions. Romans 13, verse 1, the NKJV. Let every soul be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God, and the authorities that are, and the, uh, let every soul be subject to the governing authorities for there is no authority except from God. And the authorities that exist are appointed by the Most High. So these are offices that have been appointed from the Lord. I want to go to 1 Corinthians 12. So we're seeing members of the church, of the body, of the house of the Lord being built. Let's go down to, I want to get right to it. Yeah, 28. Right here. 1 Corinthians 12, verse, let's go to 25, 24. For our comely parts have no need, but God hath tempered the body together, having given more abundant honor to that part which lacked, that there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should be should have the same care one for another. So every member of the body is important, but it has an order to the body, to the church. 
that's been set in place. So it can't go out of everything is subject to the, the mind, the arms, the legs, the foot, the torso. But if the, the central nervous system or the government, the mind of that body fails, then the rest of the body begin to fail. So the central government are the leaders, the leadership structure. But there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care one for another. And whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it, or one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. Now ye are the body of Hamashiach, and members in particular. And God hath set some in the church. First, apostles. This is the key. So this is the hierarchy, the rank structure. They're above the deacons, the bishops. See? And God has set some in the church. First, apostles. Secondly, prophets. Thirdly, teachers. After that, miracles. Then gifts of healing. Helps government. Diversity of tongues. So the high, the central governing authority start with the apostles. Let's go back. <clears throat> Romans 13 and 1, NKJV. Let every soul be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God. And the authorities that exist are appointed by the Most High. The NIV, let everyone be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except that which God hath established. The authorities have the authorities that exist have been established by the Most High. See? So to deviate from that structure constitutes rebellion because they are leading in the spirit of the Most High through Yahawashai. See? 1 Peter 2. Look at the title. Honor authority. <laughs> That's why you notice a woman honors her husband. She respects her husband. So the body is the daughter of Zion, the church that honors Yahawashai, our head, with all subjection following him not questioning or trying to undermine his authority. Let's look at that word honor. Honor. Great esteem, distinction, privilege. Privilege. Something regarded as special honor. Integrity. Integrity. The quality of being honest and having strong moral principles, moral uprightness. So to be murmurers, backbiters, to be disgruntled, dissemblers, it goes against the structure, the order, and the honor that is joined with Yahawashai, which is the church. The body of work. Let's go back. <clears throat> Honor authority. First Peter 2, verse 13. Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man 
for the Lord's sake, whether it be to the king as supreme. Oh, here, I'm going to go into it. See, let's go to 14. Or unto governors, as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of them that do well. So you have the government that we're under, which is under the Edomites, but you have a church being built in this land of gross darkness. So we're subject to the powers placed over us. Go back to this. 1 Peter 2 and 13. NKJV. Therefore, submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether to the king as supreme. NIV. Submit yourselves for the Lord's sake to every human authority, whether to the emperor as the supreme authority. Let's read that again. Submit yourselves for the Lord's sake to every human authority, whether to the emperor as the supreme authority. Let's go to the CSB. Submit to every human authority because of the Lord, whether to the emperor as the supreme authority. So the Lord sent leaders and established a hierarchy, a church, the members of the body of work. Or the Hebrews 13, verse 6, <laughs> so that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. So the Lord, the powers are ordained of the Most High. That's why we, the ultimate authority is Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai. But we respect his men that he has commissioned. See, verse 7. Remember them which have the rule over you, who have spoken unto you the word of God, who faith follow, considering the end of their conversation. Rule over us. Commission from on high. So these men have been delegated authority to make decisions and to lead the church. First, the apostles. Let's go into the other versions. In KJV, remember those who rule over you, who have spoken the word of God to you, whose faith follow, considering the outcome of their conduct. So they're held account. They are held accountable to their decisions, to the way the doctor did teach it, and how they teach. Remember. NKJV, remember those who rule over you, who have spoken the word of God to you, whose faith follow, considering the outcome of their conduct. NIV, remember your leaders who spoke the word of God to you, consider the outcome of their way of life, and imitate their faith integrity, obedience, not speaking out against our leaders, our teachers. Imitate their faith, which is grounded in integrity. When you're building a bridge, every part of that bridge must be sure, tested, tried, and proven. 
If not, you got about a 500 feet drop. Good luck on your way down. So every component of this church must have integrity and not give way to corruption, to wickedness, to bribery, seduction. CSB, remember your leaders who have spoken God's word to you as you carefully observe the outcome of their lives. Imitate their faith. Imitate their faith. So leaders have been sent. See, let's go here first. Second, Ezra. One. Second, Ezra one. Let's go down to verse 38. So we, we don't know who we're talking to or dealing with. We don't, know, we don't know who is Jeremiah, who is Isaiah, Zephaniah, Habakkuk, Malachi, Micah, Ezra. See, Ezra was, so Ezra received this prophecy when these men were so-called deceased or passed over. Second Ezra 1 and 36. They have seen no prophets, yet they shall call their sins to remembrance and acknowledge them. I take to witness the grace of the people to come, whose little ones rejoice in gladness. And though they have not seen me with bodily eyes, yet in spirit they believe the thing that I say. So his sheep are fine-tuned, to his will, his instruction, through the spirit of discernment, this truth. And now, brother, behold what glory and see the people that come from the east. Israel, Jerusalem, is in the east or the orient, far east. Unto them, I will give for leaders Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Hosea, Amos, Micah, Joel, Habakkuk, and Obadiah, and Jonas, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi, which is called also an angel of the Lord. So these are angels, messengers, leaders. Prophets. How do you think that's going to go over resisting his men that have been ordained to teach and do his will, that are commissioned with authority, which starts with the apostles? We read that. First, first Corinthians 12 and 28. So disobedience is as the sin of witchcraft. Now let's go from there. We'll go here first. Sirach 32. Maybe these young men will listen to this lesson. Sirach 32. Verse. Let's go to verse 7. Speak, young man, if there be need of thee and yet scarcely when thou art twice asked. So they're not even supposed to be talking. Who asked them to speak over the authority of the apostles, the elders? Let's read it again. Sirach 32, verse 7. Speak, young man, if there be need of thee, and yet scarcely when thou art twice asked. Let thy speech be short, comprehending much in few words. Be as one that knoweth, and yet hold his tongue. If thou be among great men, 
make not thyself equal with them. And when ancient men are in place, use not many words. And now we just read, he's going to send Malachi, Habakkuk, Obadiah, Zephaniah. See? So to approach the church and its ministers is to proceed in meekness and humility. If thou be among great men, make not thyself equal with them. And when ancient men are in place, use not many words. I'm going to read this again. Second Ezra, Second Ezra 1 and 39, verse 8, 38. And now, brother, behold what glory and see the people that come from the east unto whom I will give for leaders Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Hosea, Amos, and Micah, Joel, Obadiah, and Jonah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, and Malachi, which is called also an angel of the Lord. Messengers. Let's go here to Sirach 8. Sirach 8, right here. Sirach 8, verse 8. Despise not the discourse of the wise, but acquaint thyself with their proverbs. For of them thou shalt learn instruction and in how to serve great men with ease. Miss not the discourse of the elders, for they also learn of their fathers, and of them thou shalt learn understanding, and to give answer as need requires. So these men are supposed to be humble, obedient, submissive to the powers ordained of the Most High. Now let's go to Sirach 44. <clears throat> Sirach 44. Verse 4. Let's go to, yeah, 3. Such as did Beru in their kingdoms, men renowned for their power, giving counsel by their understanding and declaring prophecies. This is why the men of the Lord are called lords, like Abraham. They're angels, ministering spirits, because they have a spiritual eye. Verse 4, leaders of the people by their counsel and learning meet for the people wise and eloquent in their instruction. Just like King David, the chief musician, such as found out musical tunes and rejected verses in writing, received verses in writing. Get ready to close this out. <clears throat> Let me go here first. Proverbs 19, verse 20. Hear counsel and receive instruction that thou mayest be wise in thy latter end. Did you hear that? So who's given the instruction? It's the church, the leadership that have been set up. By, by men. 
through the spirit of Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. Proverbs 10, verse 20. Hear counsel and receive instruction that thou mayest be wise in thy latter end. Come down to verse 23. The fear of the Lord tend to life, and he that have it shall abide satisfied. He shall not be visited with evil. So this is a protective covering to be obedient. Have integrity. To be submissive, loyal. A good soldier on the battlefield for Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. Read one more. I think we already killed the dog three times over. No need to keep doing it. So the key point has been made. Leadership has been set up and established. The Bible says, believe his prophets. This is the way to life, longevity. Whenever the ancient kings of Israel and Judah rebelled against the counsel of the elders, they fell as a nation, as a kingdom, which really started with the rebellion of, under, of King David. So this was ordained of the Heavenly Father, though, through the Spirit. This decree had already been sent forth that Israel would fall. So he put in weak leaders of Israel in the north and weak leaders of Judah in the south that were hard-headed, rebellious, stubborn, stiff-necked, that rejected instruction and wise counsel of the elders so that Israel would fall and fulfill Bible prophecy. So these men have been reincarnated back on the scene. They're back. Yes, they're kings, but they're the kings of the shameful part of our history when Israel began to fall and was split into two kingdoms. Hopefully this lesson has been edifying. All praises to Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai. Let's read this. <coughs> I think it's 16. Proverbs 16, verse 17. The highway of the upright is to depart from evil. He that keepeth his way preserve his soul. Pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. So these men are lifted up as the commercial trade towers. Okay? So they're lifted up above their, their wits above their capacity. So that's why they're doing five-hour videos to break down the sea hit or the might be. They're working in overdrive beyond their capacity or their lot. Pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Better it is to be of a humble spirit with the lowly than to divide the spoil with the proud. So it's time to humble up. Well, humble down. No pun intended. Because pride leads to judgment. Look at Pharaoh. Look at the wicked kings of Israel and Judah. Hopefully this lesson has been edifying. All praises to Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bashem Kadash, Rock of Thumb. See you on the next lesson, Lord willing.
Palm Yasharala, and the Bad Baba. We got next, Lord willing. Shalom.